In this Geostari, we want to use the shorelines of the Keweenaw Peninsula to give clues that tell us about the cracking, breaking, and spreading of a supercontinent a billion years ago. This is the story of the Mid-Continent Rift. Geologists get paid for two tasks that they do better than anyone else. One of them is to read a landscape, and the second is to read the rocks. Here, if we read the rocks, we find two main kinds of rocks. Black rocks, which are in the upper part of this uh, waterfall outcrop at Eagle River, and red rocks, which are below and overlie this. The red rocks are sediments, and a sequence of clastic sediments, what we call clastic sediments, sandstones and conglomerates. So lavas, sandstones and conglomerates, whenever we see this combination of things, we already think about a continental rift. To understand how the rift evolved, geologists have been looking at how all the different pieces are put together. The most important clue we have is that here on the south shore of Lake Superior, all the lava layers are dipping to the north under the lake. On the north side of the lake, for example at Isle Royale National Park, all the layers are dipping the other way, south under the lake. This tells us that there's a huge depression and that Lake Superior runs right down the middle of it. Geophysics shows us that the rift continues for thousands of miles across North America. But everywhere except around Lake Superior, the rift is buried. Get a cartoon of a slice of the rift. First, you pull apart and form a crack. Then you fill that hole with lavas, which are green in this diagram. Then you put sediments on top. Finally, there's a big push that caused thrusting the rift rocks upward along faults. Here we have a sequence of 400 lava flows, and we're right at the top of it. And the lava flows alternate uh, from soft portions. Those are the flow tops, like what we see in the lower half of the section here that's very slabby and has salmon-colored um, layers in it. The salmon color is a mineral lamantite. It's a zeolite mineral, extremely soft, and it also fractures the rock like the top crusts of lava flow in which the lava is run out from underneath. And so they're very soft. They erode and make a bay located here. The rocks are dipping at about 25 degrees off in this direction. The upper part of the overlying lava flow is above. It's much, much harder. So it makes a ridge. So we have ridge and valley topography and 10 lava flows which form around the point here at the Eagle Harbor Lighthouse. Here at Eagle Harbor, you're headed east. and You can watch the underwater areas of shallow and deep water. And we can see the distinctive coastal pattern here. Look how the Keweenaw shoreline is marked by submerged and emerged ridges of harder, more resistant rock layers. These tilt to the north, and they result in linear parallel features. Islands, peninsulas, swamps, lakes, harbors. And there are reef-like submerged ridges, which are sites of many, many shipwrecks. The Mid-Continent Rift is a dramatic example of how the Earth works. It's a great crack and trench across North America. It's obscure everywhere except near Lake Superior, where we can see the evidence directly.